This tutorial is going to cover the basics of creating a schedule and a legend in Revit. So for a schedule, we want to have the all the elements, whether it's doors or windows, we want to place that in a spreadsheet style so that we can place that on a sheet in Revit. Um, and when it comes to legends, we want to have those doors or windows elevated in a way that shows each each one drawn in elevation. So this is a sample project and what we're going to do is tag all of the doors and windows. So everything is already tagged um, in this project already. So to create the schedule, the first thing we'll do, we'll go to View, Schedules, and you'll see the Schedules Quantities. Click on that. And the first the one we'll create today is uh, a window schedule. So I'm going to scroll down to the window categories, click on window, and I've made a few already. So this is creating window schedule five. You can rename it if you like. Now this next interface has a series of parameters on the left. And each of these parameters can be brought in to our spreadsheet. And so when I bring this across, we're going to generate a new column for it. So with each parameter that we want to show, this is something else that we're describing to the contractor or the building official about our project. So or about that window itself. Okay, so some of the, the categories that we want, and this is dependent on each project. Um, we're going to include, the first thing is going to be the mark. So the mark is the actual symbol itself, so how, how that window is categorized in Revit. So when you click on it, there's this green icon here to add the parameter. So when you click on that, it's going to add it to our schedule. So again, now that's one column in our schedule, and this is going to be the first column. So as we add parameters to this list, they're going to sequence from left to right on our Excel sheet, essentially. Um, so on our, uh, yeah, so this will show up on our spreadsheet. Um, we're going to add family and type. So go to family and type, add that in. We'll add the width and height. Width, add, height. We also want the rough width and rough height to, to give um, kind of an understanding of where it's going to go in the framing. So we're going to add rough width and I can hold control to add multiple. And if I want to change the, the order of them, I can click and then use this arrow to move the parameter up. So I have rough width and rough height shown here. The next thing I can add is the sill height. So I'm going to add that. I want to know how high my window is off the finished floor. I'm going to add the glass material. Pull that in. And manufacture and comments. So manufacture, bring that in, and then comments as well. So again, each of these is going to be a column in the spreadsheet that Revit generates. And you could create, if, if there's something that you want to show here that doesn't isn't showing up, you know, a property or a parameter of that window that you want to include, you can hit New Parameter and create your own custom parameter. Um, and you can tell it to add text if you want to manually type in information on it, or you can use one of these parameters. For, for Revit to calculate based on that family. So I'm happy with these, so I'm going to hit OK. And so it's going to generate this window schedule based on all those parameters. And again, each, each, each parameter is showing up as its own column. And it's Revit is going to look into the project and find every instance of those um, those windows that it's seeing. So it's including some windows. I've gone in and 
in my floor plan, I've modified all of the windows by clicking and then clicking a second time. For every window, I added a W, so it's W1 through 5 through whatever. And for doors, I've double clicked. To click on the tag itself, you just mouse over it, tab through it until it's selected, and then click a second time and you can add, uh, in this case, D for door in front of it. So as I change it in the tag, it's going to show up in my schedule the same way. Um, the, the two that it's showing here are skylights, and I don't want to show those in this. So what I'll do, I can actually create a filter to hide specific windows. Normally, I wouldn't want to hide this, but in this case, to, to show how the filter works, I'm going to hit Edit. And I can filter out certain windows or doors um, in this schedule. And you can say Filter By. Uh, I'm going to say mark. So it's going to what, what I'm going to do is tell it look for anything um, that contains this W and show that. So it's going to hide anything that now doesn't contain a W. In my case, it were it was the the skylights that I hadn't labeled in that plan. So. If you want to filter your your windows or doors to not include something, this is the way to do it. You, you basically set up the rules that Revit's going to use to, to filter um, any, any uh, of your windows. Okay, so again, you can go back to edit and you can edit any of these things. So we can still add more um, proper, we can add more parameters to our spreadsheet. We can create new ones. It's that same interface. Okay, filter is what we just did. Sorting and grouping, we can, if, if, your, uh, if your windows are being ordered in a strange order, you can then go back and modify how they're being sorted. So you can sort them by mark, by family and type, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to look at each of these categories as the thing that determines its order. Okay, so you can use that if, if that needs to be changed. Um, yeah, and then if you want to change the size of your text, you can do that here. So that's when it shows up on the sheet. You'll, you may want, depending on the size of the sheet, you may want to change the, the size of the text. So that's under appearance, and you can do that here. The title text is this, window schedule, header text, the, the titles of each column and the body text are the actual fields themselves. So you can change the size of any of those fonts. Okay, so once we have this, um, you know, any comments that you want to add, you can type them in here. Um, this is all editable. Glass material is a parameter that comes with the Revit family itself. So that would have to be modified uh, in the project. So once this is ready to go, you'll see under your schedules quantities tab in your project browser, you now have a new schedule. And I've already created this sheet. We can delete some of these old ones. I have this schedule that I just made, so I can drag that into the sheet. And I'll now see it here. So when clicking on this, we can use these arrow tabs to, to change the size. If we need to make a specific column wider, we can, we can modify that. And then again, to change the overall scale of this, we can click on this. Actually, if we double click, we'll go back into our schedule. And then we can go to Appearance, Edit, and then change the font size for our text. All right, so back on that sheet, we have our window schedule. Let's say we want to put a our window legend underneath it. So the way we do that is under legends. We'll say legend. Call this window legend. I'm 
I've already made one, so I'll call this two. And this is, uh, it's kind of like a drafting view in Revit where we can bring in elements in, in their elevation or in plan view. And it's essentially a 2D drawing, but it's pulling the, the families that already exist in Revit. So it, it gives you a really easy workflow to, to, print, to bring in windows or bring in doors into the project. So I want to add my windows that are in the project. So first I'll look back at my schedule. So this first one is a 36 by 72 inch. Same with the second one. And then the third is a 72 by 72. So I need to know that because I need to know which windows to pull into this legend drawing. So I'm going to go to annotate. Under component, there's this third component, which is called a legend component. So this is a graphic representation of a specific model element that I can pull in. So very useful. I click on that. And under the family, I can choose which type of window or which type of door to pull in. So I go down to windows and I'll find my 36 by 72 fixed window and I can drop that in. And since that's the same as my second window, I'll put that one here as well. And I'll also put in my 72 inch window. So I just elevate these all next to each other. And I'm going to also create a datum line to show the finished floor height. So I can draw a detail line, make this a medium line. and draw that out for as many windows as I'll need. And so in my case, the, the sill height is a foot above the finished floor. So I'm going to dimension that. So DI for dimension. And I'm going to place this one foot above the floor. So I click on this detail line. The distance turns blue. I can then modify it and set that to one foot. So now I'm one foot above finished floor. And I can then dimension both the height and the width of this window. Okay, so I would do that for each one. Um, I'm also going to add diagonal lines to show that this material is glass. So DL again, and I'm going to use thin lines, draw a diagonal. Mirror this just to indicate that this is glass. Okay, so I can maybe group this, right click, sorry, group. And I can copy that CO for copy and place that in the glass. People have different workflows. There's probably other ways of doing this. This is the way I'm showing it here. And we also want to label these. So this is W1, W2, and W3. So I'm just going to add text. I'll change the size of this to a quarter inch. CO for copy. I can copy this. There's probably also a way to tag this window so that this can be automated as well. If there's a way to do that, let me know. But as of now, I'm just manually labeling these. All right, so you'll dimension all of these. And it's essentially the same thing for the door schedule and, and door legend as well. 
So once you're done with the legend, you can also drag that into your sheet. So this was legend two, I drag it and drop it in. So now I have my window schedule and my window legend drawn out.